Through these halls walk the finest people in the world, our faculty, our students, and you. Be yourself. Who else is better qualified? Desire is the ingredient that makes the difference between an average performer and a champion. Winners are the people who, when the odds are stacked against them and those around them have fallen, have the courage to look within themselves and make the impossible possible. Many of us talk trash about the building, how everything is falling apart, how the heaters won't work or the air conditioning won't work, or that we're breathing asbestos and that we're going to die of lung cancer or asbestosis. However, what I want you to realize is that all these negatives is what gave this building character. It gave us something to laugh at, something to make a joke about. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is your future. Today is your life. Live it. Excellence is doing ordinary things extraordinarily well. What's popular isn't always right, and what's right isn't always popular. The UHS Leadership Class 1998. Live for today, dream for tomorrow, learn from yesterday. My name is Mohammed. My name is Mohammed. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mohammed. <laughs>We, the Oxbridge High School student-to-student -student mentors, are here to help the freshmen feel comfortable in their transition from middle school to high school. Through this process, we will better the lives of all UHS students, as well as bring the school community close together. With persistence, hard work, and support, we will strive to make a difference.
depends on what we do in the present. Gandhi. ideas are spawned during moments of silence. Successful people know that failure is not an end, it's a beginning. The journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step, Lao Tzu. We had the pleasure of interviewing one of the former teachers at McCluskey Middle School, Mr. Hallisey. We thank him for his time. <laughs> I'm David Hallisey. I've been teaching in Uxbridge for 20 years, and I have a unique perspective to share with everybody because I'm also a product of the school system, and I grew up here. So, when people drive by Blanchard School, when I was attending Blanchard School, Mrs. Blanchard was still teaching at Blanchard School, and it was called the North Uxbridge School. Okay, so to give some detail on that, I have a little bit of investment as far as everything is concerned in what this town's all about. So, in 20 years of teaching, in my full lifetime, let me give you some interesting facts to share. There's been a Hallisey teaching in Uxbridge since before the 1930s, before Mrs. Blanchard worked at the North Uxbridge School. My Aunt Margaret, she taught there. Okay? My Aunt Marge taught at Taft. My cousin Kathy taught at Taft. And my mom, whom you all met back in the fall, she taught here as well. And now there's me. So you think about the length of time that Uxbridge Public Schools have been in effect, my family's pretty involved. If you put it all perfectly, to kind of get, like, get an idea on that. So earlier this year, I got my hands on a book on Mr. Feely, where if you look at the public schools of Uxbridge, they go back to the 1880s. There's, I don't have the book handy right now, I did, but I gave it back to him. But it was a ledger of the students who attended the schools in Uxbridge. And it was something that would blow your mind because this building here didn't exist. There was no Uxbridge High School. There were other schools around the town, and many of them don't exist anymore. One of the only remaining ones is Blanchard. It's still standing. But a lot of the other schools are not around anymore because they were neighborhood schools meaning that the attendance was very small. You'd walk to the school, you'd attend the school, and you'd move on to other schools by the end. But then eventually, you get to 1937. Look at the t-shirt, right there. 
This building, it's called Uxbridge High, opened. And things changed an awful lot. It was a central location for people to attend school. Now, this building itself, the room that you're sitting in right now, is the oldest part of the building. This was built in 1937. Doesn't look like it's that old, but it is. The floors are original. You can't see it on camera really, but all of the cabinetry that's on the side, that's original from the building. But over the course of time, things have changed. They've added new parts in. When you take science and math down the hallway in the cafeteria, that was added on later, the late 80s. And other subsequent sections of the building began to be added in in the 60s and the 70s, and then you get to the 2000s. Little pieces and parts have changed. New things have been added in. But the original part of the building, where all the foot traffic is happening, right at the stairway over here, to my right, that's original structure, 1937. So depending on when things are built, you're gonna walk past and through the oldest part of the building, 1937. Which is pretty wild to think that. 1937, the public schools in town already gone through mm, almost a full lifetime of time. This map you see up here on the wall, Uxbridge Fields, Uxbridge Mass, grading plan from 1939. So the high school had just opened at that point in time. It was practically brand new. So if you see over here, that's the original standing structure that is Uxbridge High. So 1937, what you see right there, granted it's not very detailed, that's the original structure. Over here on the side, you see future addition, which obviously, if you think about now, if you head down the hallway, that's gonna be where Mr. Priori's classroom is at the way into the hallway. That came later, but this is it. This is the original structure, the oldest part of the building. So during the course of time, a lot of things changed. It's kind of cool to look at it because 1939, if you're thinking about the history of the world, World War II had just begun over in Europe and over in the Pacific. But the United States hadn't entered the war yet. So by 1941, students who were attending Uxbridge High School, they went to the war. And a lot of kids always ask me, Mr. Hallisey, how come the gym isn't there when they see this, this drawing? I make a key point of saying, well, it's not there yet because it's Veterans Memorial Gymnasium. There's no war yet. And there are no veterans and no memorial yet. So, it comes later. Now, other interesting things that I've picked up on this as I've looked at it with my students over the course of the last couple of years, the parking space is still the same. Fair Street is still the same. Capron Street is still the same. But houses have been built in that time stretch. A lot of things have been added in, okay? If you look over here, this is something that always blows kids away, and I'll make a key point of saying, if you look up class day, class day 1952, you'll see this original structure in the background. It's not there anymore. It's a baseball stadium with grandstands. So class day, 1952, Uxbridge High School. You'll see kids going in and out of Uxbridge High here. The gym isn't there, and you'll see that in the background. That's a separate history to itself, okay? There was a baseball field there. Still is today, but not with the gigantic grandstand that go along with it, okay? If you look over here, I thought that was kind of cool. You say, okay, the practice football field. Well, people use it today for soccer and it's got football on the field. Cross country races happen there, okay? But that's the practice field, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, wait, so where do they play? If you look a little further to the north, right here, this is where the varsity football field used to be. And there's a grandstand with a field house. I never knew why the fields. There's that steep, steep, steep hill that goes from the fields up. Because there used to be stands right there and you could watch the games. It's not there anymore, but it was at one point in time. So all the games happened here. On the other side, that's where field hockey was played. And if you've been down there, you can go down there right now. Stone drain under walk from one end to the other. You all know that because those are the big concrete slabs that you can see. That's still there. But there was things on either side. So over here and here, Quigley Field, Bernard Field. That's what's there now. Where field hockey is, 
Bev Clark Field. Here are the tennis courts. Here, where it says children's corner, is a playground area. Now for a while, believe it or not, all of this over here where the field hockey field is now, used to be a parking lot. Not anymore. Now it's the field. But all of that's changed over the course of many, many decades. Which to me, it's a cool part of the history that makes up the town. If you go on to this side, now as you go along Oak Street and Granite Street, there's Pulaski Street, there's no Taft School. It hadn't been built yet. There are basketball courts over here according to what's on the paperwork. And this is parking and play area. And I know this because my grandmother told me years ago when she was a little girl, we're talking a long time ago, flood for winter sports. She said she used to go ice skating over there when she was a little girl. That's a long, long time ago, okay? So all of these things that are on here now, the pieces and the parts that make up the entire layout are there, but they're not there. Kind of like an archeological dig, but it's not at the same time, okay? It's fascinating to me. So if you go up the road a little further, do you think the Whiten School's there? Not yet. No, it's not. You can go even further down the road. Do you think some of the mills were still in operation? Probably. Down Capron Street? I think that maybe Burnout Mill was going on and still working? Yeah. That was long before it burned to the ground. People were working there. As with all the mills in town, too. It was a big industry in town. Is it anymore? No. But back then? sure was. It's an interesting thing to take a look at when you see something like this and you start doing some digging and looking at the history. It's right there in front of you and you never know it unless you look and take the time. Town Library has a lot of really cool things. Historical Society has a lot of really cool things. You just have to take the time to look. Like we're doing right now. Okay? You want to point out that house over here? I remember you brought this up last oh, time. Yeah, I can do that too. A little personal history. <laughs> this is the house that my father and his family, our family, grew up in. That's my grandmother and grandfather's house. And that's the house that my dad grew up in. Now another family lives there now, but it's still there. Okay? You know, you go down the road, go past Oak Street and head out to Riverbend Farm. Was that there? What it looked like back then? how things have changed, how things are still the, still the same. It's a lot different now. But the pieces of this history are still there. You just have to take a look. Okay? Thank you. You're very <laughs> welcome. Okay, any other questions, everybody? Okay, what are the last couple of questions, please? Okay, so when you went to the school, what was it like? Has anything changed? Oh, a lot of things changed. Um, 25 years ago, that's when I'm graduating from high school. So in 1993, I was out on the fields behind here, and I was getting my diploma. Now, 25 years later, a lot's changed. Now, it's kind of easy to say, but let's put it in perspective. No one had cell phones. No one's pulling out a cell phone and taking a picture. That just didn't happen. People actually had cameras. I feel like I'm I talk like an old man, like, you know, back in my day, we drove around town, everyone stopped, and people could cross the street. Um, but that's one big thing for a difference. It sounds really strange, but it's true. Clothing and style has changed, music has changed. But that, from then until now, noise is outside all the time. Um, that's changed, but it's added to the history of the town. No graduates, you know, say graduation of 1983, graduation of 1943, graduation of 2013, graduation of now. Okay, things do change, but a lot, so a lot, a lot of things do stay the same. It's got to look, make some connections. Okay. Do you know why it's called McCluskey now? It was named after the uh, superintendent of schools from back in that time frame, and he was a long-serving member of the community and was instrumental in setting up. Uxbridge Public Schools to really get to where they are, from where they were to where they are. Um, very honored member of the, the school community from that point in time. Um, his son will be there tomorrow uh, when we have our promotion ceremony. 
And finally, what do you think is going to happen to McCluskey after it closes down? I don't know. So if I'm going to kind of wrap up by saying that what, what's going to happen to the building, I don't know. But I hope, wish, that it stays here and people can still see it. And it's got a great history to it that a lot of people don't get to appreciate. People just drive by and say, oh, it's an old building. Not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. And despite the fact the building is as old as it is, and yeah, it's falling apart. Confirmed, it is. I'll lend you, well, I'll just leave you with this. It's been your home. Mine too. And it's gonna be a little bit sad on Monday. Things kind of wrap up. All right, if I get a little teary, I apologize. But it's true. Okay? All right, we good? Yep. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome, everybody. This will be the final walkthrough of McCluskey Middle School. I want you to put this in perspective. 81 long years. That's a long time. And that's the amount of time that this building has been standing. I want you to picture the amount of students, teachers, and staff who walked these halls over those 81 years. to picture the history of this building, the memories that were made here, the good and the bad, all the funny jokes, the relationships, even that one kid who was an idiot and always got yelled at. A lot went down in this building. In the classrooms you have sat in, history has gone down. In the cafeteria you have eaten in, history has gone down. In the locker rooms you have changed in, history has gone down. The fields in which you have played sports on, History has gone down. Not just your history, but the history of all who attended McCluskey for 81 years. one thing of you. We have had an extraordinary story of our lives in this building. Whether you have attended high school here or middle school, this school has played a major chapter in our lives. Many of us will be tracing back our childhood memories back to this very building. As the final year at McCluskey comes to an end, I ask one thing of you. Don't forget your story here. Don't forget McCluskey. This is our home.